Hello Madeline, it's so lovely to have you on this little mini series called Thriving Through Covid. You are one of my beloved 50 Thrivers. Your voice is on the book Nine Secrets to Thriving where you voice some of some parts of your story which is such a privilege for me to have you on that. So hello. Hi. <laughs> now tell me, have you been thriving through Covid? I would say I am now but I would say I struggled at the very start. And it, it's interesting because it taught me a lot. It taught me that I really like the house to myself. And all of a sudden I had a husband home, two kids came home that had flown the nest. I was trying to work and they were just doing jigsaws and drinking gin. So I was getting really frustrated. And also I had made the decision about a year ago to stop working as a psychotherapist to focus on speaking and the speaking world, the events industry, entertainment world, literally, as you know, collapsed overnight with the start of lockdown, Corona. So I was really, really lost. I was floundering. I didn't know what my purpose was. And I was pretty fed up actually. Everything annoyed me. I was getting so angry and I really had to give myself a good talking to <laughs> and that that helped. I had to pay attention to what I was doing and yeah. So in the beginning it was tough, it really was. And I can definitely relate to that. So the question is, did you join your husband and daughters drinking gin and um, doing jigsaws? <laughs> was that, are those your tips to thriving or do you have some more? <laughs> well, in the beginning I saw, because both daughters are of drinking age, that if we're not careful, we could drink every night. And mm -hmm. I didn't want to do that for a start. I didn't want to depend on alcohol every night and I also didn't want to get huge. So I said, okay, Friday and a Saturday I would drink. We did do jigsaws, one took us about three weeks, thousand piece only, they were tough. So every night after dinner, three of us would do them. Me, uh, Layla liked the easier ones. And yeah, so it was actually really nice to spend that time together after dinner, no TV, have a little cup of tea and do our jigsaw. So, so that was good, I did join them. So family time really helped with the thriving mm. through COVID. Family time and alone time. And you know, alone sometimes time. I would say I'm going to go for a walk. I'll come with you. Actually, no, I really want to be by myself mm. because I felt a bit suffocated. I, and no offense to my family. I love them dearly, but I realized I, I'm OK by myself. I really am OK with my own company. And it is that asking for what you need, working out what you need and then just being really clear with your family about what you need and taking that time out. Because I'm, I'm the same. I need I need my downtime. Yeah. And are there any other tips or practices that you feel have been really vital? Yeah, what I started to do when I realised, because I had a big tantrum as well about uh, online speaking and the virtual world, and I was hoping it's all going to go back to the same and I could just pick up, clearly it's not going back to the same. And I've now invested in the mic and I'm going to get a super duper camera and all the lighting. So I am doing far more online work. But I realised what I need to do is now really look at what I can control rather than what I can't control. I can't control whether people wear masks, if they keep their two meters distance, whatever, but I can control how I feel. And so initially I had to pay attention. So to become a better observer of my emotions and ask myself what's behind this. And then I started to try to be grateful for what I do have. And you know, I'm fortunate. I have plenty house, space, food, money to get through this. I know for many people, if life was tough before, it just got tougher. Mm -hmm. And for women, you know, I speak out about sexual violence, women that are experiencing domestic abuse, we've just seen the figures have risen so badly. Within the first three months, some of the highest figures ever recorded in the UK in like the last 11 years, 16 women, two of which were children, were murdered in the first three weeks of lockdown. So, you know, if I really put my attention into all that I have and to look at what I, what I have and rather than what I don't have, that really helped me to just land back and come back and say, you're okay, you're gonna get through this. Yes, I am grieving what I had because life was fab. You know, I was traveling the world speaking and maybe that will come back, maybe it won't, but I just have to try to find a way to stay with the moment. And if I look at what I do have rather than what I don't, it keeps me centered and grounded and steady. I love that. Wise, wise words, but that's no surprise because your story is incredible and your insights in the book are also incredible. And I completely echo that focus on what you do have and how grateful you are for that, but also feeling huge compassion for those who are in a much harder place and you've yep. mentioned um, a couple of the, the the groups that certainly I've been very focused on the last few days as well. I know you will have, have done because of the work that you mm -hmm. you do on, on sexual violence. So Madeline, 
you know, it's just a joy to see you as always. You have been such a supporter of the Global Resilience Project and I will forever be grateful for that. And I so look forward to people hearing your story fabulous, and hearing your voice. Fabulous project to be involved. One other quick tip I would say is oh, what yeah. we just seeing behind you is to get out in nature. Every yeah. day I go for a walk and I'm very lucky where I live in Glasgow. I can be in fantastic country parks in 15, 20 minutes. So just, and I've taken up hill walking as well, uh, just to get out every day and to walk and to move. Stay, stay connected, but move as well. <laughs> yeah, so being in nature, that's a big one for me as well. Absolutely vital. And even if that's your local park, if you're not lucky enough to be near a beach or a woodland or, or the hills, as I know you are. Just, just walk. Just Sometimes yeah. I just pounded those pavements when I was really frustrated. You just to get out and move, do something every day. Someone was telling me about an app that they were, so they, they live right in the middle of London, they live in a flat and so going out to the park was fine but they wanted to make it more interesting so they got this app and you put this app next to the leaf of a tree and it will tell you what kind of tree it is. So they learn that they just made that their passion. That every day they would they would work out what the trees were in their vicinity. I thought that was fantastic. I have an app called Snap, uh, Plant Snap and it's the same. If you see a plant, you don't know what it is, you take a photo and instantly it tells you what it is, what family it's from, the history, the origin, all of the information. So it's great. And you get to learn too. Yeah. yeah another <laughs> tip to thriving. Yeah. Madeline, lots of love. Thank you for being on this little mini series. You're welcome. <laughs>